I'm Daniel Fuller from the Abundant Life Training Center, and welcome to our daily communion meditation, where today we're talking about receiving back from the Lord. So there's a verse in Ephesians chapter 6, Ephesians 6 verse 8, says that we should know, we should know, not just believe, but we should know that whatever good things we do, we'll receive back from the Lord. Whatever good we do, God's going to repay us. He's going to return it back to us. So we're going to be taking a look at this passage of Scripture today and talking about the timing of how and when do we receive back. And we're going to be taking communion over this today, asking for God's help, asking for wisdom and insight into this. But why are we taking communion every day? About 10 years ago, I had pretty much no spiritual life whatsoever. I was doing life on my own without God, doing things my own way. But life wasn't going the way that I wanted it to go. At the time, I was running my personal training business. And the business started out great. But I got into some tough times. Got some months where I'm losing thousands of dollars in a month. And I remember getting to this place of going for a walk with my wife around the neighborhood. And just telling her over and over, there's got to be a better way. There's got to be a better way to live. And shortly after that, I came across a challenge to start reading one chapter from the book of Proverbs every day. Proverbs has 31 chapters. So on day one of the month, you read Proverbs chapter one. Day two of the month, you read Proverbs chapter two. And then you keep going like that until the end of the month. So I've been doing this for a little while. And then one day, Proverbs 13, 22 seemed to jump off the page at me. It says, a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. And that verse got me thinking, what's the most valuable thing we could pass on to future generations? And Proverbs tells us that wisdom, understanding, knowledge, those are the principal things. So I made a commitment that day. I want to pass on manuals and lessons and teaching for all the different areas of life. But to be honest, when I got started, I had no clue where to start. So I began to seek after God. I began to totally immerse myself in his word, to totally immerse myself in the things of God. My relationship with him began to grow. He began to show up, began to teach me, began to train me. And he taught me this whole new way to live, this completely different way to operate my life. Where we make him the source, we make him the center of it. We do life together, connected with him. Now, learning how to do things a new way. That meant I had to unlearn some old things. I went through some struggles. Had to learn how to let go of some old ways. Had to embrace and to walk out this new way of living. Walking in faith. Walking in forgiveness. Walking in love. Doing things God's way. Learning how to rest and trust in him so that he does the work. And I just began to document what he was taking me through. And over the course of about 10 years, it turned into this series of books and courses and now partners that we have called The Abundant Life Blueprint. But out of everything we do in the Abundant Life Blueprint, I do believe the most important lesson I would want to pass on is daily communion. Daily communion is what I call the number one table turner for all of life. It has the ability to create a turning point in our life, to turn things around and change the trajectory of our lives going forward. Jesus says, as often as you do this, remember me. There is something so powerful about remembering and not forgetting, especially when we're in the busyness of life and the pressures of life are coming at us. It helps us to abide in him so that our lives produce much fruit. First Corinthians eleven twenty six says, every time we take communion, we're proclaiming the death of Jesus, which in the case of a will or an inheritance, nothing happens until you prove the death. So in a way, communion is like an activation because it's proclaiming the death or proving the death that activates and sets in motion all of the benefits of this new covenant. But it's also important we take it the right way. Every time we take communion, to take it with the fear of the Lord, with deep awe and honor and reverence for the sacrifice of Jesus and all that he suffered for us. And I think it's also important to remember what his sacrifice means for us today. So the process we use, we start with about a two-minute long prayer that's mostly scripture coming from Ephesians chapter 1. And the prayer of Jabez found in First Chronicles chapter 4. And then we take a few minutes to examine ourselves. Because the Apostle Paul says some people are weak and sick and they die early because they don't examine themselves before taking communion. And if communion has the power to do that in the negative, I believe it has the power to make us healthy and strong and give us long life if we take it the right way. And then after our time of communion, we're talking about some physical fitness tips. Because I truly believe physical exercise is meant to teach us how to exercise our faith. So let's get started with our prayer. Heavenly Father, I pray for all those who are watching or listening. 
their families, all those connected to them and our church and governmental leaders. I thank you for releasing us from darkness and transferring us into the light, into the kingdom of your dear son. I thank you for your purpose and grace given to us in Christ Jesus before time ever began. I thank you that Jesus was smitten for us so that you could fight for us. And I keep asking that you, the Father of glory, would give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that we would know you better. That the eyes of our hearts would be enlightened to know the hope to which you've called us and the riches of your glorious inheritance that is in us and the immeasurable greatness of your power to us who believe. The same power that you exercised in Christ when you raised him from the dead and seated him at your right hand in heavenly places. Far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named. Not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And you put all things under his feet and made him to be the head of the body. The fullness of him who fills all in all. And Father, I ask you to bless us. And to make your face shine upon us, let us find grace and favor in your eyes. Expand our borders and our territory. Expand our capacity to receive your purpose and grace, your love and your goodness, and to let it flow through us, so that we do good and are a blessing to people all over the world. Send us opportunities to do good and be a blessing today, and help us be sensitive to those opportunities. Keep your hand on us and help us do today what's right and best in your eyes, and do it with peace and joy and confidence in you. And we ask you to stretch out your hand to heal and do signs and wonders and keep us from evil and pain. Through the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. All right. We're going to go through the other half of prayer. This is our time to examine ourselves. Are we making today a masterpiece? And how are we going to do that? We're going to get connected to the master. We're going to bring our relationship with God down into today to impact every area of our life today. And masters of anything are simply masters of the fundamentals. And that's where we talk about executing these four fundamentals and bringing some fun and some presence into them today. But before we go through the fundamentals, let's remember God's got a process. When he took the people from Egypt to the promised land, there were steps, there were stages along the way. It didn't all just happen in one day. And in a similar way, for us to step into the promises and the inheritance that God has for us in Christ, I believe there's steps and stages. There's a process we go through. And I think it starts with us believing God's got something better for our life. Better than we could ever ask or think or dream or imagine. And that's being willing to fo- being willing to move forward with his plan. Because it often looks impossible. And then we have to learn to put off our old ways. We have to unlearn some things. We have to learn how to operate our lives in a new way. To learn how to do things God's way. To learn how to rest and how to trust in him. To allow him to do that work through us. And that's where I think these four fundamentals come in. So our first fundamental. We've got to get positioned in the light today. Every day we've got to keep repositioning back into the light. It has to happen every single day. And I think it starts with humility. Because it's the humble who are open to change and turn and repent and grow. It's the humble who are given grace. It's the humble who are exalted and promoted. And we're going to receive this forgiveness from God. We're going to take our position in forgiveness. Receiving from him, forgiving ourselves. Walking in forgiveness with other people. And we're going to take our position in love today. Kind and patient and gentle. Always assuming the best. Keeping no record of wrongs. Delighting in the truth. Always hoping, always trusting, always persevering. Because love never fails. And we're going to take our position in gratitude and praise today. One of the greatest expressions of faith. And it's one of the easiest ways to maintain our positioning all day long. And being in position is a big deal. Because it puts us in position to be able to receive everything that God has for us. When we step into the light, we're stepping into Christ. And God has taken everything that he has and he put it all in him. And we get this amazing opportunity. We get access to all these good things today. His spirit and power and presence, his love and peace and joy, his mind and wisdom, purpose and grace, health and energy. There's time, finances, resources. It's all available to be received in him. So our first step is again position, I believe. Our second step is to magnify the light. 
We're going to turn up the brightness of this light within us. And it's going to expand the capacity where God can flow more of all these good things through us. Because we receive it in the spirit. And that's got to flow through us out into the world where we see, see the fruit or the result of it in our life. Magnifying the light. It's also going to get this new covenant rooted and established in our heart. We'll become more fixed and consistent in it. And to magnify the light, imagine a balancing scale with two baskets, one on each side. On one side, we've got a basket full of all the issues and problems and testings that we face. On the other side, we've got a basket full of our praises to God, praising him for who he is, praising him for all that he's done in our life. To magnify the light, which basket are we going to fill up? With our focus, our attention, our thoughts, our words, our meditation. To magnify the light, we're going to fill up that basket of praise. Praising God for his word, his unfailing love, his promises, his faithfulness, his mighty works that nothing's impossible with him. We can magnify everything that he's done for us in Christ. And just look back at all that's going well, all that he's done personally in our lives. Because what he started, he's going to finish. Now, this is not denying that there's issues or problems. There's another basket there. There's a basket full of those issues and problems. But it's simply choosing to redirect our focus and to fill up that basket of praise, even in the face of those problems, to magnify that light. But he does give us a choice. We could choose not to do any of this. We could stay stuck in pride and rebellion, insisting on our own way bitterness, unforgiveness, and filling up that other basket of the testings and problems that we face. Venting, complaining, pouting, toiling away in our mind, trying to figure everything out. And that's where we have to learn to recognize the symptoms. Because when we're out of position or magnifying the wrong things, it's going to produce some symptoms in our life. There might be the tendency to retaliate, or we might try to withhold things from people. We might snap at people. We might avoid people or give them the silent treatment isolate ourselves one of the biggest symptoms we have a lack of fellowship with god lack of fellowship with people anything that breaks that fellowship is knocking us out of the light on the inside you'll feel that heaviness and weight and pressure like it's all sitting on you you might have feelings of hopelessness or helplessness like you're trapped or you're stuck and it seems like there's no way out and all that weight and pressure on the inside just drains all the energy right out of you Emotionally, there's the fear and stress and worry. We're dreading things in the future, envisioning worst case scenarios. You might be reliving bad things from the past. And unfortunately, this can become a habit. This can become a pattern or a vicious cycle that seems to keep repeating over and over again. But when we take our position in the light, there's rest in our soul. There's fullness and completion in him. We've got fellowship with God, fellowship with people. And when we rest, God goes to work. And now all those good things he put in Christ begins to flow. Everything is free and easy and effortless and energizing because his spirit and power and peace and joy, love, his mind and wisdom, it all just begins to flow. And now all of a sudden we've got hope in any and every situation because we've got God with us. And if all this weren't enough, God gives us this amazing gift of grace that sometimes we miss it. And if we ever get off track, it just takes a moment to turn it back around, get back in the light again. How do we turn it back around? I think it starts with getting more present, getting more aware of those symptoms that we're experiencing. And then we humble ourselves. Father, forgive me. I'm off track right now. We receive that forgiveness from him. We forgive ourselves in the middle. If we need to forgive with somebody else or reconcile with somebody else, we take those steps. And then we start magnifying him. We start praising him for his grace and his love and his goodness. And then I like to pray this very simple prayer. Father, thank you that what you put within me is more than enough to handle whatever's coming at me today in a beautiful, graceful way. Help me to tap into it and see it flowing in my life at a greater level today. And you go through that simple process and that weight just lifts off you. Everything begins to flow again. It's a beautiful thing. And then our third fundamental, we got to stay tuned in today. Is that living water on the inside of you? It begins to flow. He's going to give you things to do. He's going to give you direction for your life. But we've got to stay tuned into him. My favorite way to do this is with a journal before bed. And I like to start at the very top with what I call some filters at the top. These filters are just short phrases, little things that I keep rewriting over and over as little reminders for me. 
and they helped me stay in rhythm with God. In the Old Testament, the temple had a rhythm. There were things that needed to be done every morning, every evening, on the weekly Sabbath, at the start of every month, and on the yearly cycle of feasts. Well, our bodies are God's temple now. And one of the greatest things I've learned is that getting into rhythm with him is one of the greatest ways to stay tuned into him. And so I like to start my journal at the very top with these filters. I like to start with the big picture vision. Where do I feel like God's leading me in my life? And I want to keep reinforcing that every night in my journal, just by rewriting it every night. So for me personally, that's Abundant Life Training Centers all over the world, making the body of Christ healthy and beautiful. And then I want to bring it down to this year. What do I feel like is the, the vision or the direction or the word that God gave me for this year? For example, this year, 2022, for me personally, the year of the beautiful land. So I keep rewriting that every, every day of this year at the very top of my journal. And then I want to bring it down into this month. Into this month. For example, we're just starting a new month here today. In this month, we're starting a new focus in the Abundant Life Blueprint, which is connection. We're doing a connection challenge. And so I'm going to keep rewriting that phrase, just connection prioritize connection keep rewriting that to remind me of it every day and then as we go th then i want to bring it down into the week that's where we talk about our weekly yearly cycle updates as we go around the cycle of a year think of it like a 360 degree view of god and all that he's done for us different times of the year just give teach us different angles of what god has done for us give us little reminders for example this time of year right now is looking for opportunities God's favor is on you for a lifetime. It surrounds you like a shield, and his favor produces opportunities. So just a little phrase I'm writing this week, look for opportunities. And you can tie that into connection. Look for opportunities to connect with both God and the people around you. So I start my journal at the top of those filters, and then I like to move into gratitude and praise to get in position, and then to magnify. What went well today? What were the wins for today? What are all the ways I saw God showing up today? And then I like to ask this question. God, what were you trying to show me today? And get still and listen and whatever comes into my mind, begin to write those things down. And then we got to stay tuned into him. we got to stay connected with him throughout the day. If you ever feel like you're losing that connection, just take a couple minutes, slow down, get connected to him. Think of it like plugging in a phone. You're going to get powered up in him or charged up in him again. And then I want to bring my journal all the way down into today. The final thing I like to do is to plan out the upcoming day with God. So I started with the big picture vision. I moved through this year, then this month, then this week. And then I want to bring it all the way down into today. And that's where I plan out the upcoming day with God. And I've learned to stick with. What do I know to do today? What do I know to do today? Not the things I'm unsure of or uncertain of. What do I know to do today? Because I learned sometimes I was getting out ahead of God toiling away in my mind, trying to figure things out, trying to force things to happen. On the other side, sometimes I was procrastinating on things that I knew to do. And when you do that, all those things build up on the inside. You feel that overwhelm and that lack of clarity that you get when those things build up on the inside. So I've learned to stick with, what do I know to do today? And that becomes the plan for the day. And then we wake up like a kid on Christmas morning, excited for the day because this is the day that the Lord has made. And we're going to execute that plan with joy today, just presence and joy today. And then we remember this very important principle that the first thing out of our mouth every morning sets the tone for the whole day. And as I began to learn about this, I began to seek God. What's the best thing for us to say right when we wake up? I felt like he was taking me back to Genesis chapter one, the very first words that we see God speak, let there be light. And so now those are the first words out of my mouth in the morning. Let there be light. And it's amazing how such a simple little thing brings a different energy into the day. And then we start walking out that plan in full confidence in him. He's right there with us every step of the way. And when we get to that place of confident faith, his grace begins to surge through us. He begins to go to work. He begins to beautify our lives and make things happen in our life that we can never make happen on our own. And beauty is attractive and magnetic and begins to pull more and more of everything God has for us into our life. So let's take a look at these scriptures today. I'm talking about receiving back from the Lord. So this is a verse, I've just been thinking about this verse from Ephesians chapter 6, verse 8. I've got a few other verses in here just for context. But Ephesians chapter 6, starting in verse 5, this is the Amplified. 
It says, slaves, be obedient to those who are your earthly masters with respect for authority and with a sincere heart, seeking to please them as service to Christ, not in the way of eye service, working only when someone is watching you and only to please men, but as slaves of Christ, doing the will of God from your heart, rendering service with goodwill as to the Lord and not only to men. Now, here's the verse I want to look at. Knowing, not believing, knowing, knowing that whatever good thing each one does, he will, re- he will receive this back from the Lord, whether he's a slave or free. Knowing that whatever good thing we do, we'll receive that very same thing back from the Lord. That's a pretty amazing promise right there. And so I've been meditating on this. Whatever good thing we do, we'll receive it back from the Lord. And one of the questions that came into my mind was, okay, what's the timing of this? How does this work? And I began to think about it. We did a communion meditation not too long ago. It says, no good thing does God withhold. And James 4, 17 says, therefore, to him who knows to do good. So we did good and God's, we're going to receive it back from the Lord. God knows to do good for us. For those who know to do good, but they do not do it to them, it's sin. God doesn't withhold. When he knows something good to do, he does it. He's not withholding from us. Something he taught me just over the last couple of months. He's not holding, withholding from us. But we do have to learn how to get in position and be able to receive it. We have to be able to expand our capacity to be able to receive more from him. So he's supplying this. Whatever good we do, he's, re- he's returning it back to us. Now notice, this doesn't say the bad things that we do. We've been redeemed. It's an amazing thing. So Heavenly Father, we're just so thankful for this scripture, these promises. And we're asking for wisdom and understanding and insight into this. And to all that you're giving back to us. And we're asking for your help to be able to receive those things. To expand our capacity to receive back these things that you're giving back to us. And we thank you that on the night Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's take a moment to remember him. God sent us his one and only son to die for our sins. And if he would do that, how would he not freely give us all things richly to enjoy? Jesus is willing to come and humble himself to death on a cross. God pours the cup of his wrath onto the body of Jesus. Jesus is crushed. He's destroyed by God. It says it pleased God to crush him. All of us like sheep had gone astray. We'd all turned to our own ways. We've all done things our own way. And God laid upon him the iniquities and the sins of us, of us all. By his stripes we've been healed. He was crushed and destroyed by God, but then he's raised back to life. He's victorious over death. He's raised up and he's seated at God's right hand in heavenly places. And then he raises us up with him. He makes us new creations and sits us together with him in heavenly places. He makes us right and holy and perfect in God's sight. All through his one sacrifice. So Father, we thank you for this bread. And ask you to bless it in Jesus' name. If you have your bread, you can take your bread. Then after supper, Jesus took the cup. He said, this is the cup of the new covenant. In my blood poured out for the forgiveness of sins for many. It's the forgiveness of sins that releases us from darkness and transfers us into the light, into the kingdom of Jesus. And he's a great king. His blood washes us and cleanses us, makes atonement for us, gives us this new covenant, this blood sworn oath. God is with us. He's for us. He's working continually for our good. He's fighting for us. And his covenant, he will not break. He's not going to turn back from that. So Father, we thank you for this cup. 
and ask you to bless it in Jesus' name. And what's our part in this covenant? To believe in him and to walk in love with people. To walk in faith and love. That's our part in this covenant. It's partnership with him. So Father, thank you for this cup. If you have your juice, you can take your juice. All right. Let's talk about some physical fitness stuff. <clears throat> One of the concepts I think about when it comes to fitness, a lot of the workout programs that are out there are, are, are trying to bombard the body with more and more and more work, which is good to build up the body's capacity to do more work. That's good. But we also want to train our bodies to be more responsive to training. Sometimes you do too much too soon. It's like you're making your body um, less responsive to the training. As we want to do the amount of work that's required to stimulate growth and progress, but not bombard the body, not beat it down with too much. And we want to train our bodies to be more responsive, both in the area of training and nutrition. To train it to be more responsive to what we do so that we get better and faster results. But I hope this has been helpful for you today. If you'd like to learn more about partnering with us in the Abundant Life Blueprint, you can go to the Abundant Life Training Center.com.